And item 5 in the order paper is the adjournment. The proposal of the topic will have 15 minutes and all other speakers will have approximately 10 minutes. I call Mr Stuart Dixon. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to bring forward this adjournment debate today. Um, this is a, an issue which has been greatly exercising my constituents in, in my local offices in Carrick, Fergus, and in Larne. I, I'd like, at this stage in the debate, uh, to take this opportunity uh, to thank the Larne Line Passenger Group for their work in holding TransLink to account and seeking to develop and encourage the use of the line for the future. Indeed, the Larn Line Passenger Group's commitment stands in stark contrast from the commitment shown by TransLink and the Regional Development Ministers. Clearly, the Minister does not see it as a priority today by her absence. And with the exception of Mr Beggs, other members from East Antrim. In September, TransLink downgraded its service to the people of East Antrim. There is no other description for it. The new timetable means that trains now run less frequently, service fewer stations, and ultimately makes it downright awkward to use the train in East Antrim, driving commuters back to their cars. These timetable changes were brought in following a so-called consultation exercise one that was wholly inadequate. In fact, by many, it has been described as nothing short of a farce. I believe Section 75 obligations were not met, as required by the Northern Ireland Act, and no indication of the scale of cuts was given. The surveys were conducted, in my view, were inappropriate and questionable in their methodology. In response to uh, correspondence which I received on the matter, TransLink said that passenger surveys preferred a less frequent service to a complete cut of service. I have to say, Mr Speaker, I find that both an ain and ridiculous point to make. Of course someone would prefer a reduced service to no service at all. But what the people of East Antrim truly need is a good, efficient and frequent service to encourage people to leave the convenience and comfort of their cars and to use our new quality trains. Indeed, I have been informed that passenger figures that TransLink used to justify the cuts may have been taken during a week that included a bank holiday and also one in which schools were off, hardly a representative sample of uh, passengers using the line. Mr Speaker, this only adds to the issue that we have of overcrowding on trains during the morning and evening rush hours. Passengers, including school children and commuters, are forced onto fewer services with less hope of getting a seat on their journey home. All of this in the context of higher fares. In recent weeks, in an attempt to assess the scale of the impact on my constituents of the cuts on the Larne Line, I have been running a survey on my Assembly website. The results make for sobering reading. Of those responding, 71% have said that the changes have impacted on them negatively, making journeys less convenient. Of these, 64% have had to uh, seek alternative means of transport. Unsurprisingly, the chief alternative means is the car. Therefore, we currently have a ludicrous situation where TransLink is pushing more traffic onto the roads, clogging our motorways and our Belfast city centre in the morning and evening rush hour, because ultimately travel by car is, by most people's perception, faster, cheaper and more convenient. It is far from surprising, therefore, that my survey, in my survey only 16 per cent rate the service as good. But a further to this, a massive 75 per cent believe that the service is getting worse. As may be expected, 80 per cent identified frequency as an issue, 45 per cent said it was crowding, and 42 per cent said cost with others expressing concern about punctuality, station amenities and park and ride. Let's look at some of the peculiarly, particularly illustrative examples of the inconvenience and lack of sense that is seen in the timetable. Firstly, there are early and late trains to Dublin, which residents of East Antrim simply cannot access by train or even bus anymore. 
In fact, it is now impossible for a resident of Fergus to reach Belfast city centre before 7 a.m. via public transport. This is simply unacceptable. Meanwhile, on the opposite side of Belfast Lock, residents in Bangor, a town two miles further from Belfast Central than Carrick Fergus, can reach Belfast Central Station as early as 6.37 a.m. Mr. Speaker, Larne Harbour is unique in its proximity to a passenger ferry port, a potential benefit that Translink appear to have ignored altogether, terminating many of their services in Larne Town and even running a two-hourly service after 7.20 p.m. Indeed, it seems that bit by bit, Translink is starting to try and abandon the Larne line, reducing services to Larne, to Whitehead and even to Carrickfergus. What we need is a sensible approach to connections, rather than salami-sizing services. Translink should be looking for areas of development to encourage greater use of the Larne line and ultimately increasing their revenue. Translink's policy is to cut services to the bone, cram passengers in, and push them back into their cars. Mr Speaker, I want to turn to what I believe should be done instead, how I envisage what Translink and DRD need to do to develop the Larne line for the future, to increase passenger numbers, to get people out of their cars, and to stop the Larne line from becoming an afterthought. As we will be aware, the York Street Road Junction is due to be upgraded to a free-flowing junction in coming years. This development in road infrastructure will be a one-off in a generation chance to uh, dual track the Dargan Viaduct, which travels from York Gate to Central Station on the Larne Line. Translink and DRD must act now to ensure that future development of the Larne Line for the people of East Antrim. I am informed that if only the roadworks proceed, then the railway line will never be able to proceed. The engineering works must proceed hand in hand. A major opportunity for expanding rail use in the provision of park and ride facilities at commuter stations. Such amenities have produced major benefits at stations such as Green Island, Whitehead, Larne and Carrickfergus. But much more could benefit from the park and ride most notably at rural halts, where the only practical means to reach the station is via your car. Ballycarry is a case in point. This station is the most accessible station to practically all of the Island McGee Peninsula and Ballycarry Village. However, it is by and large only accessible by car, but in practically impossible to park anywhere near the station. A park and ride would open up an entirely new region for train travel. Furthermore, with the opening of the Gobbins Path as a tourist uh, opportunity, it would provide for a more efficient way to move tourists to the new attraction. Mr Speaker, I appeal to Translink and to the DRD to look at this with a genuine urgency, as they are clearly missing out on opportunity at Ballycarry. I also think that consideration should be given to the reopening of certain halts along the railway line, particularly that at White House in Newton Abbey. The halt at White House closed in the 1960s, but with the construction and expansion of Abbey Centre from the 1980s onwards and the general upuse in rail usage, a stop here is clearly in demand. Previous reasons given for not reopening the halt was the poor quality of rolling stock, which found it very difficult to either start or stop. But with the new trains, that should no longer be a problem. The opening of a halt at White House Abbey Centre would help to reduce congestion in surrounding roads, particularly at peak times such as the busy Christmas shopping period. I have recently had contact with the DRD Minister, when we actually had one, about the possibility of electrification of the line, utilising it for freight to and from Larne. Many may say, why on earth would we electrify the line? But actually, there is a major project in Europe called the 10T project, which is delivering exactly that right across Europe from very many small countries to some of the largest. Such proposals may be far in the future, may not even be economically viable today. But Translink need to have ambition. European initiatives provide financial support to such schemes. But there is no evidence from DRD or Translink of even starting to seek to access such funding. Again and again, we hear that it's just too difficult, 
too expensive for us to have an integrated ticket or live bus route information systems or buses in Belfast only got that last year, years behind the rest of Europe. We, Mr Speaker, need a bold strategy to develop the Larne Line and Northern Ireland's rail network. DRD needs to fund this accordingly. We know how difficult financial times we are in. Much of massive rail infrastructure is actually sourced in Europe. I think we will all agree that the current use of the car is neither sustainable or desirable. Uh, to conclude, Mr Speaker, on this debate, the timetables that sparked this debate has been a farce in the beginning, and it is time for TransLink to put it right. Instead of slicing the service ever thinner, I would call on TransLink and DRD to restore the previous timetable. The people of East Antrim do not deserve a second-class rail system. We should be developing and investing, not trying to push passengers out. Thank you very much. I would like to thank the member for bringing this motion forward. I think it's healthy to have a debate on the Larne Line uh, to highlight its successes and improvements that have been, but also to highlight the difficulties that have arisen, particularly with the reduction in services of recent times. It is too disappointing that there are only two of the six uh, MLAs from the East Antrim area uh, present here uh, to share their views on the subject. Um, uh, and I welcome a third member of the Assembly who, who is with us uh, today, Dahi Mackay. Um, so Larn Line has seen significant investment over the past decade. Uh, we have had highly successful park and ride facilities, and I think uh, we, we can't underestimate the success there's been there. Carrick Fergus, there's now over 300 car parking places, and frequently it is full. Uh, that is a great success which has uh, eased traffic congestion. Uh, it's also eased some of the travelling cost uh, of those who have to park in Belfast and eased their frustration as they would have uh, queued to return uh, to get to Belfast and then ultimately return home. There is also uh, successful park and ride facilities at Whitehead, which are fully occupied, and at White Abbey. And again, improved facilities at, at Green Island. Uh, we need to look forward as to see where additional park and ride opportunities uh, can be created. Uh, and I recognise that in, in, there are difficulties in locating space close to stations, uh, uh, but nevertheless that must be attempted uh, and uh, note and, and would support the, uh, uh, Mr Dixon's view that Ballycarry should be considered a, a, as a park and ride facility given that uh, Whitehead is at full capacity and, and there are a few other options in that area. We have to recognise the other success has been the, the, the complete rail end of the rail track which, and, and the well rail, which together with the new trains has provided, trans, it has transformed the rail service from something of the 1960s era to something of the modern era. And then on top of that, of course, we now have Wi-Fi which is very popular, and you can see many of those who travel by uh, rail using their, their, their smartphones, um, reading their books, uh, other, other activities, certainly. Just by way of information, Mr Speaker, I happened to travel on the train from Great Island to Great Victoria Street on Friday, and I can assure Mr Beggs that sadly the Wi-Fi was not working, and that is actually one of the many complaints that people uh, bring to me. But I, I do accept that it is a benefit, but only when it works. Agree entirely with the member. It's vital that, that any new service works, or there will be many, many complaints. And I hope that message goes through to, to TransLink, and they resolve difficulties uh, that have occurred. But, but this uh, investment that has occurred has uh, um, supported the growth of the Larne Line. The Larne Line, which had been uh, there had been a dearth of investment for many, many decades, and in fact, uh, at, at one stage, uh, it's clear that some officials. Uh, certainly would have wished to have uh, ended the line at uh, Whitehead. I am pleased that even of recent times uh, that has not been the case and um, the, the uh, Glen River Railway Bridge has been renewed uh, to uh, another further investment which uh, I would certainly perceive it being uh, an indication uh, of a continuing recognition that, that this service should continue. 
uh, and, and rightly so. But we, ha we have this new timetable, and I have to say there, there are uh, some, some problems with it, and I'll go on to that uh, later. I, I have uh, engaged a bit with uh, TransLink and uh, went to their consultation at, uh, at the Larne Town Station, and it actually struck me as more of, of an information session of telling you uh, what the alternative train would be rather than uh, any true consultation. Um, I certainly got a sense that the, the, the change was a fait accompli, and, and the new timetable may even have been printed at that time. I, th I think certainly uh, uh, indications were been giving it of what the new timetable was, which was about to start in a very few days. But one of the issues that was raised to me was, uh, uh, by TransLink officials was a cost of providing rail transport uh, in Northern Ireland. The figure that was threw at me was £18 a kilometre, and that if you wanted to run a train, obviously there would be a critical mass of uh, uh, passengers that you would have to pay so that they uh, could, could provide the service. And that is a consideration that has to be taken uh, on board. We also have to recognise that public transport in Northern Ireland uh, generally receives less funding per mile, per passenger mile, than uh, their, their counterparts in Great Britain, uh, and that the subsidy that is provided uh, uh, from the public purse has been cut. So I have a certain degree of sympathy for TransLink in that uh, um, uh, they have had to ensure uh, that they continue to provide a service and yet remain uh, financially solvent. And I welcome the fact that uh, they are actually uh, reducing their sizable um, war chest that has been built up, which was much too, too high. It was over 50 million at a time. Uh, and that um, as a result of these changes, public money will, will be put to better use. Um, I, have to too, I too have to appreciate the work of the Larn Line Passengers Group uh, in their efforts to improve the service. Um, they have frequently highlighted difficulties and made uh, suggestions uh, for improvement. Uh, and the sooner issues that are going wrong are addressed, the better it will be for the travelling public and indeed for TransLink, who will be able to retain uh, uh, their uh, travelling public. Certainly one of the issues that has been highlighted recently has been the uh, trains travelling, I think it's the 7.30 train from Whitehead travelling to Belfast, where there has been a lack of capacity and frequently passengers have had to force themselves onto trains or alternatively the train not even stop on occasions at uh, White Abbey station. Uh, that has largely occurred as I understand when a six car set has not been dispatched. Uh, it's clearly that there is a demand for that larger train uh, uh, at, uh, on that particular service and it is vital that uh, TransLink uh, has the resources and has an ability to ensure that it is, relied, uh, is dispatched reliably all the time because you cannot provide a bad service and expect to retain your passengers. It's vital that there is a reliable service. If passengers cannot, if they turn up the station and cannot get on a train and cannot get to work, their job could be at risk. So they, they, they cannot accept that. That is not acceptable. It's vital that that does not happen. I, I understand that that is no longer a problem. I hope that that is the case. It certainly should not have happened. Um, but there are nevertheless pressures. And one of, one of the changes that's been brought in has been a cut to uh, the two early morning train services from Larne traveling to Belfast, uh, both the, the 548 and the 625. And now the first train leaving Larne is the 660, uh, which doesn't get into Central Station until 7.45, City Hospital 7.55, or Great Victoria Street at 7.58. Much, much too late. Um, really, uh, uh, many people have to work in Belfast at an earlier time, and there has to be a rethink of how that service uh, can be uh, reinstate it so that uh, 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 those who need to work in Belfast at an earlier time can get there. And of course, the, 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 the uh, uh, Ulster bus alternatives equally cannot uh, get them uh, 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 to Belfast, particularly earlier. They can, I think you can get in about quarter past uh, seven 
But then if you eat, that's, it will of course be at the Glengall Street bus station and then you have to travel on from there to your place of work, which may not be possible depending on where exactly you work. Similarly, in terms of the late night service, um, passengers uh, now must, if they want to return uh, uh, on the Larne Line by train, depart Belfast at 10.45. Now, there's very few people who would travel out for Belfast for some form of entertainment uh, who would be able to get back to the station for 10.45. Frequently, that is, that is too late and not a practical train. Uh, so again, I would say there needs to be a rethink of, of that. Uh, as has been said already, some of the services, uh, particularly at, at weekends, is a two-hourly service. And there is great risk with a two-hourly service. Uh, will passengers uh, uh, recognize that as a deliverable service? If you miss your train, how are you going to cope in waiting another two hours? That is a huge length of time. Uh, um, so uh, that, there are risks in going to such, such a service. Now, whilst uh, uh, many would wish the retention of the timetable, I, I think, with given the costs, uh, I am fearful that that may not be easily achievable. If not, I would ask TransLink to say what are they going to do, how are they going to build the numbers, how are they going to work with Ulster Bus, with feeder services to build the numbers to provide the service with public transport so that more and more people will be able to travel earlier and later, for that matter, uh, and, and get to their work or place uh, of uh, entertainment. Uh, so I, I uh, thank the member for bringing this motion forward. Uh, I think it has been worthwhile. Thank you. The uh, proposer uh, of the motion for raising this very important issue, and can I give apologies for Mr. Oliver McMullen, my party colleague, who has a, who has a medical appointment that he has to attend this evening. Um, this is an issue that you could replicate in, in a lot of constituencies, uh, but I think that the general issue uh, that always comes back again is, is the, the attitude. And I think that uh, within government, you know, that there is this car centricness um, that needs addressed. Uh, and I, of course, recognise there are many very good examples uh, within TransLink, uh, within uh, DRD, who see the need to improve and build upon uh, our rail and bus infrastructure. But much, much more needs to be done. Uh, obviously, we are lagging behind. Uh, much of Europe, uh, and whereas there is, there's always been traditionally uh, a great focus on investment in, in our major roads, um, we, we can realise a lot more savings and actually reduce congestion on some of our main roads by improving our rail and bus infrastructure. Uh, and a good example of that is, is the park and ride uh, facility that the proposer of the motion uh, raised earlier. Uh, in terms of within my own constituency in Ballymena, we built the park and ride. You had to extend it again and again and again. Such was the demand uh, for people to simply park their car and put their feet up on the bus for, for the trip to Belfast. So the, 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 the demand is there, and I, I think that's what uh, is very frustrating, in that we want to see a good public transport system, uh, but where we fail again and again, and this has come up. Uh, and the Public Accounts Committee and some of the reports we've done uh, is the fact that we haven't invested enough uh, in the public transport to get the, the return that we're looking for. Uh, so in terms of the Lauren line, I, I think that we should see uh, greater investment. Uh, I think that we should see more common sense when it comes to the timetables, uh, because if we want to improve the nighttime economy in our towns and cities, then we need to have a, a late night service uh, in terms uh, of the train, and, and, and like uh, Mr. Beggs has said, uh, the, the, the service there could be uh, much uh, later uh, than 11 o'clock, because anybody going for a night out that's going to spend 30, 40, 50 pound in a restaurant, they might want a later service to ensure uh, that they're not having to leave uh, their function earlier than, than, than they have to. Uh, so a bit of common, common sense needs to be uh, applied, but a bit of an, an ambition as well. Uh, because where, where, where we have seen the success in the park and ride service uh, is that there, there's been bold initiatives, we've built it and they've came. Uh, so if, if you build the infrastructure, if you build the park and ride facilities around uh, the train halts, if you increase uh, the, uh, the, the uptake of the service by increased halts, 
uh, and also in terms of elect electrification uh, of the line in, in the longer term, you, you will have a better service, you will have better choice, uh, and you will have more people on, on the railways. Uh, and of course, uh, you only need to look at, at the line to Derry uh, as well, that almost uh, reached the end of the line uh, in recent years, uh, and that is a great success. Now, I've used it many times myself. Uh, it goes through Ballymena, Ballymoney, Cullibaggy, right through my constituency, uh, and it is a huge asset. It has uh, uh, not a bad Wi-Fi service, I have to say, uh, maybe better than the Larne one, uh, but it is a great way to travel. Uh, and it's good for people's health as well, because being stuck on, uh, on the M2, uh, whether it's uh, at Sandy Nose uh, or Tomb Bridge, uh, is not a very pleasant experience when you have to do it each and every day. So uh, the, the train service is something uh, that we need to uh, improve upon. Uh, we have very little infrastructure as it is. Uh, you, know, you look elsewhere, you look uh, at the programme that Barra Best did, uh, in terms uh, of the, the old railway lines, uh, and I think everybody who watches that program just shakes their heads and says, you know, if only we still had that today, those railway lines going up through uh, the glens of Antrim, through Armoy, through the Ballet Castle. Uh, if those were still there today, we would have a completely different infrastructure. Uh, and we have a much better infrastructure, uh, and it's such a crying shame that that was done away with. But it also, of course, uh, produces other opportunities because something that we are exploring is, is trying to uh, uh, change those old railway lines into greenways for cyclists uh, in rural areas. So that is something uh, that the department needs to, to look at as well. So uh, I'll, I'll keep my contribution uh, short in, in regard to th this particular uh, debate. But in terms of the Larne Line, the Larne Line needs investment, the other lines need investment as well. Uh, and we need a, a change in the general approach from uh, the minister or the ex-minister or uh, the soon-to-be minister uh, for regional development, uh, and, and that when she does return to your desk, uh, she needs to ensure that we see an increase in the, per in the percentage of funding that goes towards public transport, because increasingly uh, it, it just seems barmy uh, that we're spending money on road maintenance. If you spend the money on public transport infrastructure, you get people off the roads, so there's less need for maintenance of the roads. Uh, so it makes sense economically. So we need to see uh, a greater commitment. We need to see bolder moves uh, to increase uh, spending on public transport. We need to see better buses. We need to see better trains. Uh, and I do give some credit to the previous, previous uh, DRD uh, Minister, Mr Kennedy, in, in terms of some of the things he did around cycling uh, and public transport, but we need to, to put a European head on, I think, in, in regard to this, uh, not only in terms of the culture, but also in terms of availing and drawing down uh, funding uh, that every other country uh, seems to be good at. So I don't, I don't see why uh, here uh, in the north that we cannot do the same uh, for our local uh, railway commuters. Thank you. Thank you, members. And the question is that the Assembly do now adjourn. The Assembly is adjourned. Thank you.